Greetings, viewers. This is your evening English news broadcast live from our headquarters in Asmara. It's Monday, August 23, and I'm the reporter, Miram Johannes. Here's a rundown of the top stories we're covering. Announcements from the Ministry of Health. PFDJ branch activity assessment meeting in the Northern Red Sea region. Firefight involving Western forces erupts amid Kabul airport evacuation chaos. Bandits release 15 students after parents pay ransom in Nigeria. And now we proceed to the details for the local news. We have an announcement from the Ministry of Health. One patient has been diagnosed positive for COVID-19 and tests is carried out today at a quarantine center in Asmara Central Region. On the other hand, six patients who have been receiving medical treatment in hospitals in the Central Region have recovered fully and have been discharged from these facilities. The total number of recovered patients has accordingly risen to 6,571, while the number of deaths stands at 37. The total number of confirmed cases in the country to date has increased to 6,624. Ministry of Health, Asmara, August 23, 2021. The PFDJ branches in Af'abat, Na'afaq, Aurora, and Adobha subzones in the Northern Red Sea region held a six months activity assessment meeting on the 17th of August in the town of Af'abat. At the meeting, in which administrators and PFDJ heads of the four subzones took part, activity report and charted out programs for the coming months were presented. Participants conducted extensive discussions on the report presented by heads of political and organizational affairs of the PFDJ branches in the four subzones and adopted various recommendations. Discussions on reinforcing the PFDJ as well as other national organizations such as the National Union of Eritrean Women and National Union of Eritrean Youth and Students were conducted. In a speech delivered at the meeting, Mr. Rezan Adonai, Secretary of the PFDJ branch in the Northern Red Sea region, said that in the next six months, more attention will be given to the empowerment of women and youth, as well as strengthening organizational capacity of employees in the civil service. Date cultivation project being conducted in Gahtalai and the Goli administrative areas in Ginda subzone is registering encouraging result. Engineer Nadal Mohammed Noor, an agro-engineering expert, stated, According to Engineer Nadal, 350 date trees have been planted in 20 hectares of farmland since the project started in 2010 and have reached a harvest stage. Indicating that 10 types of dates are planted at the project, Engineer Nadal said that expansion effort is underway in Dogoli. He further indicated that along the dates farming activity, the project provides free of charge health services to residents and livestock of the subzone, as well as professional counseling. Coming up after our short break is your international news. Stay with us. Welcome back. One person was killed after a firefight involving Western forces erupted at Kabul airport today. Afghan guards exchanged fire with unidentified gunmen, adding to the evacuation chaos as Washington faces pressure to extend its deadline to withdraw. Thousands of Afghans and foreigners have amassed at the airport for days, hoping to catch a flight out after Taliban fighters captured Kabul on August 15 and as U.S.-led forces aimed to complete their pullout by the end of the month. Twenty people have been killed in the chaos at the airport, most in shootings and stampedes in the heat and dust penned in by concrete blast walls as U.S. and international forces try to evacuate their citizens and vulnerable Afghans. A sniper outside the airport fired at Afghan guards. Some 600 former government soldiers are helping U.S. forces at the airport near its north gate. U.S. and German forces were involved in the class, Germany's military said. It also added that three wounded Afghan guards were being treated at a field hospital in the airport. 
Two NATO officials at the airport said the situation was under control after the firing. The Taliban have deployed fighters outside the airport where they have tried to help enforce some kind of order. Bandits have released 15 more students kidnapped last month from a Baptist school in northwest Nigeria. School administrator Reverend John Hayab told Reuters news agency on Sunday that parents had raised and paid an undisclosed ransom to free the students who were among the 100 who were captured on July 5 from the Bethel Baptist High School. Hayab had previously said the abductors were seeking 1 million naira that is 2430 US dollars per student. So far, 56 of the kidnapped Bethel students have been released or escaped from their abductors. Samuel Aruan, the state's commissioner for Interna internal security, confirmed the release but did not immediately comment on the ransom payment. The Bethel abduction was part of a string of kidnappings by armed gangs, known locally as bandits, who have long terrorized northwest and central Nigeria, looting stealing cattle and kidnapping for ransom. Following is a recap of our top stories. Announcement from the Ministry of Health. AFDJ branches activity assessment meeting in the Northern Red Sea region. Firefight involving Western forces erupts amid Kabul airport evacuation chaos. Bandits release 15 students after parents pay ransom in Nigeria. That was all for tonight. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.